customer uh, brought back the uh, brushless motor. Um, it's one of the G-Force ones. Run it briefly and then he's just checking it on the bench and it stopped. Um, the rotor won't turn, but um, there's two reasons for that. Normally either the uh, winding has broken and got wrapped in, around inside or the um, rotor has uh, broken and a bit of a magnet has jammed it. Um, normally that only happens when you rev it up highly, but uh, I believe uh, he wasn't doing that. So um, I guess he's just been unlucky. We've seen the number of broken rotors over the years, but lately they seem to have got a hang of um, not breaking. They, rotors used to also, magnets used to come loose on the shaft as well, where they were supposed to be gripping where the force on used to come loose and, and you used to rev it up and the magnet used to go around but not the shaft. Uh, anyway we'll take it apart and look inside and see what we can find. Taking the end off and it's pretty clear <laughs> the uh, magnet has shattered off of the centre core and uh, <laughs> it's now in, in bits. So I'm um, going to have to pull that out and make sure I get all the shards out. And luckily I've got another uh, spare rotor somewhere. I'm assuming it's going to be uh, the standard rotor. So, And then I'll have to check that none of the shards hit or broke the um, centre board. But that looks alright. And um, put it back together and check it out. By the way, pulling the rotors out, I you can use. I've got a um, pair of pliers. Just pull it out. <laughs> There's the center part, the BRCA legal, which is a center um, non-magnetic core, and then all the other bits are inside. I'm going to have to get them out with some uh, pliers. It's going to take a little while to uh, pull all those. Magnet bits out. Oh, I'm have to make sure that all the bits don't go flying everywhere. Okay, I've put the uh, new rotor back in after <laughs> cleaning all the broken bits and piling them up on, on there. I'll have to get rid of that. And um, Put the new rotor in, uh, remembering to put the uh, correct shims in it. I uh, might have to re-shim it when I put it together. There's a, a spacer on the front and the back. And then it's just a matter of um, putting it together and uh, checking it for end float. I mean, there's, you want a tiny bit of end float uh, because of the expansion. But not too much, that's too much because it can cause the timing to uh, not be dead accurate if it's, if, it, uh, if it's vibrating backwards and forwards. So it needs a tiny shim in there. But sometimes when you do the screws up it does tighten it up a bit. But that's, that is actually uh, uh, too much movement there. These uh, little crinkly washers that they supply and replacement rotors are good because um, they will take up the slack but they will, because they're crinkly, they will squash up as the motor gets hot and uh, won't cause it to bind or push against the bearing which would be really bad. So I put one of them in and it's just, uh, it's just enough. Uh, there's no play there but it's not too tight either. So I'll tighten that up and um, we do some tests. Okay, we've reassembled the motor. Uh, rotor turns really nicely now. I've connected it up on um, this little motor analyzer. Uh, first of all, you can you can actually test it. Check the KB, the RPM, the current draw all looks good. Then you can uh, you 
can actually do the timing as well. So it's working properly and um, hopefully uh, it won't <laughs> blow another rotor. There you go.